I said, Mom, just calm down, Mom. Mom. <laughs> All right, I'm just walking up for a moment. First of all, I want to say good evening again to everyone. Thanks to the people who came to the public hearing, and thanks for your input. Um, you know, we did what we thought was best for the community, so I want to say thanks to everybody for supporting, for supporting and giving your input. I'm going to go on and open the meeting up, say good evening again, and thanks again. We're a few minutes behind schedule because of the fact that I'll probably hear it in a couple minutes over. But we have a, a relatively short agenda this evening for our regular meeting, but one important thing, and I'm happy with everyone to see, I was just talking to Mr. Sheffield, one of our other ethics representatives. We have the three again. Uh, I, I had another candidate that's come forward to live right directly behind us here, behind the building. And she's going to be sworn in shortly. So that way our ethics commission will be complete again. So I want to say thank you to her for stepping up and, and really helping because we need these kind of things at all times for our community. So I'm opening up saying welcome to everyone. Thanks for coming. And I'm going to proceed on down. This evening, Mrs. Uh, Sarumi, our town manager, is taking the place of our town clerk because she's had uh, physical, you know, problems, family problems, sister sick, she's sick, it's, it's just been a lot of things going on. So Ms. Sarumi is here tonight as far as the recording. We have our recording, recording also being done by Mr. Gray, our regular representative for Mr. Gray. Want to say hello to the camera? Yeah. And uh, at this time, I would like to open the meeting. And Mr. Rumi, would you please call the roll? Yes, ma'am. Council Member Morris? Here. Uh, Council Member Morgan? Here. Uh, Council Member Upp, if you walk up. Present. Council Member Hargrove? Here. Council Member Waiters? Present. Council Member uh, Wudatsa? Present. So all of them are present. Mayor Martin. Mayor Martin. Present. Thank you all very much. Everyone is present. At this time, I would like us to have a moment of silence just for our communities and cohesiveness at its best of what we can do to work and to bring our town into a, an era where we're going to be proud, things we're going to be proud of no matter what we do. As we start forming more coalitions and getting people to think in terms of looking out for one another, that's what we so desire. So please give me a moment of silence for that. Thank you all very much. We have the flag salute here. I think someone left the flag upstairs. So if you all would like to, we could just pledge. It's just a general, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all very much. You may be seated. I'm going to start off. Uh, Lieutenant Ivy, I see that you're the first person on the list here for a police report. Would you come to the middle of the floor and please give us a report? Good evening, dear Councilman Citizens. Good evening. Um, for April 2021, Fairmont High School is approximately 170 calls for service by April 2021. Lieutenant Ivy began with 40 calls for service by the system of code enforcement assistance. They will come to the station and information forms to them from the mayor and council received from town residents. Lieutenant Ivy also has criminal examination court cases and the Motor Vehicle Administration and Terminal Affairs Unit for the town ordinance violations that will to be enforced. Also, activity consisting of an anonymous caller advised that they observed a male inside a truck with a handgun. Upon arrival, officers on scene they seized the handgun and the suspect was transferred for process. Next, a shooting incident where the suspect attempted a carjacking, then placed a gun to his head and installed a self-inflicted single shot from his hand. There was a non-contact shooting incident involving a security officer with the heavy hand. He was assisting a victim in who was attacked by a suspect who fled from the scene. 
and there were no knife threatening incidents. There was another contact shooting involving two victims who left a residence and received gunshots through that upper body area. The victims were transported to Prince George's Hospital with no life threatening injuries. The victims did not want to provide a statement as to what happened. I want to repeat, the victims did not want to provide a statement as to what happened. Concerning updates, the Maryland Police Training and Standards Commission Annual 2021 Community Policing Annual Report was completed. Each agency is to provide a description of the agency's community policing initiatives, which is mandated by the Training Commission. The Fairmont Heights Police Department partnership with the State's Attorney's Office of Prince George's County and the Carjack and Task Force. Lieutenant Ivey, Councilwoman Patricia Upton Duarte, Councilwoman Stella Hargrove, and Councilwoman Jackie Morgan had a meeting with Major Wyatt Prince George's County Police Department concerning the Sheriff Road carryout. The Fairmont Heights Police Department, along with the Liquor Board of Prince George's County, Maryland, were able to enforce no one going to detain for every in during the COVID-19 following the State of Maryland guidelines. Also, annual in-service training for Fairmont Heights Police Department and firearms training to be conducted and completed before the end of the year, 2021. The Fairmont Heights Police Department Community Police and Health Coordinator and support the 100-year-old birthday celebration for town resident Ms. Graves. Participation from Prince George's County Police Department, Chapel Oaks Fire Department, and other elected town and county officials made her celebration a joyous and much appreciated day. Also concerning patrol, Prince George's County Police Department continues to help support the Fairmont Heights Police Department with patrol. The main council that concludes my report. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Lieutenant. All right. My next report is the code enforcement report. Did anyone receive Mr. Pinkett's report, or has he come in the building? No, maybe he hasn't come in the building. Okay. I have it from work session. Okay. Uh, council member, uh, would you present that just in case he doesn't get here? Monthly report, March 4th, 2021 through April 8th, 2021. Summary. During this period, we have issued one building permit, one long, long fence at 5505 K Street for $98. During this period, we have issued notices of violation and corrective action to the following. Nathaniel Mines, 608 60th, New Capital Invest, 1003 60th Avenue, Stacy Kahn, 1002 60th Avenue, Moses Yogaraja, 811 Eastern Avenue, Barbara Banks, 5427 Sheriff Road, W. Bruce Evans Lodge, 521 Eastern Avenue, TNB Investments, 714 60th Place. Um, and that was done due to a neighbor's complaint. On April 19th, 2021, our office demolished the half building located at 708 60th Place and backfilled it with the dirt, with dirt. The owner of the property arrived on the scene and stated that we did not have the right to be on her property. At that point, she summoned the Prince George's County Police. When they arrived, I called Lieutenant Ivy for assistance. I told the Prince George's County Police officers that we had declared this property to be a public nuisance and we had noted the owner by mail, and we also posted the notice on 3.30 of 2020. Our office has received a complaint from Mrs. V. Jones of 5709 Jaw Street concerning the water in her backyard from the alley off the Eastern, off Eastern Avenue. We also received complaint from Candace Hill of 523 Eastern Avenue concerning our rat population in her area. 
mainly the property next door, which is the Bruce Evans Lodge. I was under the impression that Bruce Evans Lodge was affiliated with the Prince Hall Masonic Order. This is not the case. According to their business description, W. Bruce Evans Lodge is located at 521 Eastern Avenue, Fairmont Heights, Maryland. This origin organization primarily operates in the vacation lodge business industry within the hotels, rooming houses, camps, and other large places sector, places sector. This organization has been operating for approximately four years. W. Bruce Evans is estimated to generate 54,000 in annual revenue and employs approximately two people at this single location. Therefore, I believe they are operate, operating without a business license and a use in occupancy permit, um, which he did ask us what needed to be done, which we stated that they needed to be cited. Uh, draft letters for Mrs. Wilder's variance, Mrs. Guzman's invoice notice. And he's still waiting on our vacant lot ordinance. And that will complete Mr. Pinkney's uh, report. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Council Member, for reading that. And uh, I'm going to continue on down to the Treasurer's report. I'll do the Treasurer's report. I have a Treasurer's summary here. May 19th, the year 2021. Total assets as of 4-30-2021 were $650,726.73. Total assets include funds in the town's bank accounts and accounts receivable. Budget summary. As of 4-30-21, we were 10 months, 83% into the fiscal year. Total revenue as of 4-30-21 was 70%. General revenue, 66%. Intergovernment transfers, 83%. Other revenue, 70%. The police department, 3%. This is an area of concern. Amnesty letters have been mailed to business owners with delinquent accounts. Total expense as of 430, the year 21 was 70%. Administration, 65%. Election, 0%, no election in FY21. Legislative was 49%. Municipal, 97%. Public safety, 56%. And public works, 94%. Income review. Item number 4405, building home rentals due to COVID-19. Building closure, no income has been generated for fiscal year 21. Number 4406, parking lot rental. Increased notification of available spaces would help to increase usage. Item number 4600, code violations and fines. This account will be discussed during the upcoming budget meetings. 4620, scholarship fund and 4630, youth council. These accounts will be discussed during the upcoming budget meetings. Increased attention to these accounts will help generate revenue to support our youth. Item number 4836, police department, due to extremely low income on FY21 adjustments need to be made for FY22. Expense review, 5150 newsletter. Need to review the cost of the green team's newsletters and zip flyers as well as the town's newsletter to ensure ample funds are in the FY22 budget. Item number 5240, scholarship award. Due to several generous donations, scholarship awards in the excess of the $400 budget were given in FY21. Uh, item number 5250, youth council. Events and activities need to be planned for FY22. Number 5735, Veterans Memorial Renovations. The Prince George's County Historic Preservation Committee is reviewing the renovation slash repair submission. And item 7062, Town Maintenance. Additional funds need to be allocated in FY22 to address trees that are impeding walkways 
encroaching on citizens' properties, and hanging on electrical wires. That concludes the Treasurer's report for the month of May. At this time, I would like to ask Mr. Rumen to complete her report. Oh, so, but the thing I want large citizens to know, 
When a funder comes to you to ask you for it, that's a good thing. Um, the, um, the Morehouse Satcher Health Leadership Institute of Morehouse School of Medicine award, is awarding $20,000 through the Health Community Initiative. And some of you may recall that we were awarded $10,000 in August 17, 2017. That project was remarkably successful. We partnered with the school. And, and for the first time out of the school, we had young people in Prince George's County who went to the Future Farmers of America. Mm -hmm. And so our goal this year when COVID came was to go and win, but, but we went anyway. And then I got a call from a mother at the school, a uh, grandmother. Mm -hmm. uh, her daughter went to come out of high school. And guess what? She got a full scholarship mm -hmm. to go to Virginia Union. When they took back college, she majored in agriculture. And this is her last year. Mm -hmm. And all of this came through this grant and came through Fair My Heart. So often when I hear a citizen, what's coming from the citizen, you also have to look at the good things that we're doing. I want to talk about the net zero housing development. Uh, the town of Fairmont Heights on uh, behalf of HIP uh, hosted several citizen engagements and I think some of you, they are also going to like to communicate with home cars and knocking on doors to let people know that we have funding available. Through a new program, which uh, they talked about today uh, with the state of Maryland, uh, the town of Penn Heights has been earmarked $600,000 through the National Economic Development Program. That means we can do at least, I had to figure it out. We can do at least 12 houses. And so that would include, and the reason we want to do that, I think you're a side fact, I could call you out, but I, I remember there was a lot of discussion that we were bringing these beautiful net zero housing and, and, and some of them at a fair market value of 480,000. What about people already here? So we talked about what about people already here? So we came up with a program. If you're interested in getting your house renovated and repaired, it's a grant. Please let me know. Or you can go on the HIP, Housing Mission Partnership website. The funds are available. Please take advantage. You can get windows, roofs, doors, um, all of that will be available. Again, that's $600,000. Pitch my time, pitch first, please. Uh, that's $600,000 that's coming into the town for, uh, through HIP. But the other thing that I want to announce is that uh, through the Housing Part Initiative, uh, on April 1st, 2021, HIP, PEPCO, Maryland Indian Administration, and Emera of Florida, and I, I met for a pre-press release conference to discuss a microgrid system. Let me tell you how that came about. If you remember a few months ago, you remember what happened in, in Florida, Texas? When the grid went down, the whole grid went down. So yeah. guess what? We came up with a system to say, that happens in Fairmont Heights in D.C. All you have to do is plug your house into that microgrid, and you have services. I think that's innovative. So what did we get for that innovative project? $200,000. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put, I'm going to put that press release on the website. Uh, green team monthly meeting. We didn't have a, we didn't have a monthly meeting uh, because we had Earth Day. Earth Day was a big success. Uh, we uh, had uh, the Pacific Association. First, I would like to thank all the members of the Pacific Association who worked on Earth Day, who went out and collected bags and bags of crap. I want to thank you. All of these, not the town volunteers, but they collected big bags and bags of crap. I want to thank Mrs. White for coming in. She was a fly. She came in and she uh, helped us to register to give our information for the historic trail. And Chris was kind of that's the one thank you, Mrs. Uh, Council, uh, Mrs. Uh, Satan, who also came in and helped us with Earth Day. So we had citizens who volunteered. Uh, so uh, and that was that was really, really, I think, a great benefit. And um, Mrs. Walker did talk to me about trying to include some of the great things that we do in, in the budget. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is the um, um, Sustainable Maryland Talk to the Workshop. So I will be getting back to the Mayor Council. I will send all of you copies of the work available. 
And maybe we need to sit down and talk about a plan. What is it that we need to apply for? And even if we're too late to apply for this year, uh, Councilman Boyd, I think you were economic committee wrote, we really need to be working on a significant plan so when the funds are available, then we can just plug it in and be able to work the plan. Uh, what the state of Maryland want? Projects that are shovel ready. They don't want anything that you got to plan uh, that you have to apply to. They want it ready. They want you to ready to get in the ground and let's go see this plan. So, uh, I know some of the things I heard tonight, and some of the things I heard that I've been working on. Um, this is uh, Downey Lab, but I spent one afternoon, one afternoon, Mrs. Mrs. Downey and her husband, and we walked her area to get the stormwater problem. I think we looked at the problem on Job Street. We know there are problems. Uh, I'm working with engineers through the state of Maryland uh, to be able to come up with ways that we can address the water problem. Uh, I'm working with the Department of the Environment, Prince James County, Department of the Environment, the Southern Government level. So it's going to take a while, but we are looking at ways that we can mitigate the water problem. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Romy. All right. Appreciate that. Appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. Can I offer a comment on something, Mr. Romy, um, in the case of those tips? Yes. Okay, because I think it's very important to um, get out the right information to the community. So, okay, so um, she mentioned that the uh, $50,000 uh, uh, HIP program, you mentioned that it was a grant. But I just wanted to share that on Monday night, um, a young lady from Hill okay. was gracious enough to um, come and make an invitation to the citizens. Uh, committee, she's doing what they call the citizen committee. And I just wanted to share that I forget her name, but my young lady, Jennifer Harris, Jocelyn Harris. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just want to share that Ms. Harris indicated it's not a grant, it's a loan. Mm -hmm. Up to $60,000, there is a um, forgivable loan. No, it's not forgivable. <coughs> you do not have to pay it back. That's until what it's forgivable loan. It's time to sell your house. Right. for that, Ms. Gladden. Uh, we're going to move on down to the agenda. And I'm going to actually move up one special section. And at this time, I would like to ask Ms. Tamika Johnson if she would come forward. She would be our final Board of Ethics representative for the town of Fairmont Heights. I would like you all to please give her some applause because you know, you don't realize until you sit back somewhere and you're not really involved in it, you don't know until you get involved. Now, it just takes heart to actually volunteer. But you know, that's just a process. But I, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you. And at this time, Tamika, would you please raise your right hand and repeat after me? I state your name. Do swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland 
and support the Constitution and laws thereof. And that I will, to the best of my skill and judgment, diligently and faithfully, without partiality or prejudice, execute the office of the Ethics Commission for the town of Fairmont Heights according to the Constitution and the laws of this town and state. Consider yourself dutifully to one. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm going to let you sign first and I will sign. And then we'll get a copy of this. You can sign right there. Lincoln, huh? I'll put this upstairs. Let Ms. Tucker get a copy and she'll call you to pick it up. Mm -hmm. I'll sign. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. You'll get a copy of this. Okay. As a matter of fact, I think you get the original. She's going to make a copy, but she'll do it for the week of that. Thank you. All right. You're going to give her another round of applause. Yes. Yes, indeed. At this time, actually, we had our school board representative, Ms. Belinda Queen. She was on the schedule, on the agenda. I don't know whether she's still coming, but we'll work around her. Yeah, I, if, I used use my phone, so I didn't text her. OK. So we'll work around if she does come. The, the last person on the agenda is Mr. Barnhart. I know it was something going from the Civic Association. I don't know. But, but I just got the message to put you on. Good one. All right, so if you come forward, we're going to move on down. Go ahead, Mr. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> so good evening, everyone. Good evening. Hi. Good evening, citizens. Thank you all for coming up tonight. Appreciate you all for having the time of the city day and schedule. Coming out here to sit here to meet. I tell you, you know, get folks involved, like pulling teeth sometimes, but I'm glad to see you all. <laughs> Mayor, thank you for putting this on the agenda. Um, I'm not going to be long. Uh, I have a lot that's going on right here. This is a citizen concern. This was brought up to the Civic Associate, sorry, Citizen Association. We still trying to get it right to you know, the Citizen Association. We changed the name. Okay. Changed the name so folks that didn't know, now you know. It's no longer the Civic Association anymore. We wanted to change the name because we wanted to unify our community. We wanted to make sure that everybody that was in the community felt like they was part of it. We change the name to the Citizens Association because we are citizens. And this is our community. That's why we change the name. And we also want to go ahead and have a fresh start to make sure that we were doing things in a different way. Another civic association. That didn't say they were doing anything wrong with this thing that we want to do something different. Okay, so today we have a citizen concern that has come to us. And this was uh, something that came up last year about the 85th anniversary. And we just want to go ahead and share this with you all because we got budgeting going on, we got uh, taxes increasing, things like that. We want to make sure that folks know that these are some issues that we need to focus on as a community when it comes down to our tax dollars. All right, 85th anniversary, we have a budget line of $2,000. That's our budget line for our 85th anniversary. Okay, and I'm, I'm going to pass out something real quick so people can get a little glimpse of what this is. Man, do you mind? No, you can pass. Okay. Okay, okay. okay so we got a budget line of $2,000 for our 85th anniversary. Now, for people that don't know, you know we didn't have our 85th anniversary. So, we put up money or something that we didn't even have, all right? Now, we sit up here and we had to do a little research on the 85th anniversary, who was involved, committees, and things like that. Do you have any more of those sheets? No. I'm passing them around. 
You'll be passing around. Around. So, like I said, it's a citizen concern, so we want to go ahead and address it. And when they brought it to our attention, it was correct. It's a two thousand dollar budget line for it, and it was a check that was issued to Council One Harborough for three thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars. And this three thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars consists of a budget analysis, consulting for twenty hours, uh, where the list churches, uh, TV graphics, calendars, uh, scripts. All kinds of stuff is in the e-bright and everything is in here for this $3,850. So, once we Google the company, call the company, no answer. Facebook, one review. So that kind of raised some eyebrows to us about what was this operation, how was it done as taxpayers one, okay? So, once we did that, we got no answer. We did and started so looking at what we were really looking at as far as okay. how All right. So yeah, violations here that violating our charge. One dash fifty-eight. You can pass these out too. All Can right. we get some on the side over here first? Yeah, you pass them all over there. So, Thank you. you got $3,850 that was spent for the 85th anniversary. We don't have a person to contact. We don't have anything on Ms. Harbrook level. Okay. She we says she's coming right back. She's coming back. Anything. Okay, so. The budget line is $2,000. According to the charter, we're not supposed to go over the over $1,000, according to the charter for the spending. And we also have an overage expenditure that's for bid for any contract. And I'm going to read it for you real quick. I'm going to pass these out as well. So people can know. You got to have the back screen. It's all about facts. It's all about facts. Okay. So now we have three thousand eight hundred fifty dollars that was put out for eighty fifth. It didn't happen, okay? We have a committee that was involved with that that had no say-so on none of these deposits that was made through Cash App. Taxpayer dollars made through Cash App. I never heard of such. How do, how do you pay a vendor with taxpayer dollars through Cash App? Would you like to have an answer? I can answer that. I do it every day. I'm, I'm, I'm not going. I'm not going. Uh, I'm not going to take up the time. Uh, I want to make sure that I, I get this this done because it's a, a citizen concern. I want to make sure that I'm doing my job. So now, like I said, we go to the charge, and we have two violations here. The money that's given to Ms. Harborough to the eighty fifth. Now, my thing is. If we have a charter that's in place, and our council is supposed to know what the charter reads, then why are we violating our charter? It's a clear, a clear violation of our charter. We are not supposed to spend over $1,000. I don't care who votes on it. Don't care who votes on it. And that's the problem that we have. We have a problem with, we have a majority of their rule on the vote, and that's it, and that's all. But we have a charter. What's the purpose of having a charter if you're going to constantly vote a majority rule and it's going to pass every time? We might as well go ahead and turn our charter in. We might as well just give our charter up. That's the thing. We might as well just say, hey, y'all just keep on voting any kind of way y'all want to, and we're just going to keep on just rolling along with it. That's not fair to us. 
And this, this is our tax dollars. Our tax dollars that we don't even know where it went. You contact, you contact the company, they're out of Virginia, Mr. Lewis Johnson, with his sunglasses on, next to the cash app, for every deposit. We are, the, the, the 85th anniversary committee didn't did authorize all these transactions. And they said they voted on, they had minutes on, but just because you vote on something don't mean that it's right. If it's not abide by, by the charter, okay? Overages forbid. No officer or employee shall do anybody get a spend or contract to expend any money or incur any liability or enter into any contract which by its terms involves the expenditure of money for any purpose and assesses of the amounts appropriated for or transferred to the general classification of expenditure pursuit to this charter. Any contract verbal or written made in violation of this charter shall be non involved that's what that means. So that means that this budget line item that was right here, set for the 85th, $2,000, then it went over $1,850. That was not supposed to be approved, and it should not be issued. an issue. And we should not have council members paying for events out their pockets and want to return back. That should be going through the mayor council, through the government, a check coming from the taxpayers to the vendors. Not from a council member to the vendor. That's not a good business. And somebody said it in one of our 85th committee meetings said, you don't miss apples with oranges. You just don't do business like that. So I'm not here to start confusion. I'm not here to uh, make this a messy meeting. I'm just saying that we have to be very, very cautious and very, very aware of where our tax dollars are going. And that's why we just had this meeting before this meeting. Because we're sitting up here talking about increasing taxes. We need to be worried about where our money is going at all the time. And our town treasurer, she should be here so she can go ahead and ask any questions that we might have when it comes down to our tax dollars. But that's not the case. We understand she has family emergency. We understand she's not here. And, 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 and that right there is to be considered. But at the same time, every time we have a meeting that's concerning our tax dollars, we can't get answers. And then we got people saying, okay, you know what, we'll go ahead and have a closed meeting after this. We just go ahead and vote on something that we don't even know about. This stuff has to stop, y'all. Really. And that's all the time I want to say. Thank you, Mayor. Thank mm -hmm. you, Council. All right. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. Ms. White. Yeah, I don't know. I wasn't put on this. The other side of the city. Huh? It's the other part of the citizens' concern for the citizens' association. Oh well, I well, I had Mr. Barnhart on here. Were you yeah, part you of the on, same? Yeah, when I called you, it was supposed to be both of us speaking. Oh. We had two citizens' concerns. Okay, go ahead. Okay, that's a part of our citizen citizens' concern. Was um, you're leaving on the 30th of May mm -hmm. to go to the 100th anniversary of the uh, Tulsa massacre. Um, we are not clear who the vice chair of our town is. Who's going to be responsible for this town when the mayor goes away? On the county website, it says elected by voter to four terms. Terms become four years as of May 2019. Ms. Millie Martin Thomas, mayor and chair. Jacqueline Wood Dotson, vice chair by council 2022. The vice chair is Ms. Jacqueline Wood Dotson. The town charter says you have to miss three consecutive town meetings in order to be removed as vice chair. The Fairmont Heights website had the report of Jacqueline Wood Dobson not missing not one work section meeting, not one town meeting. So that's in violation of the charter. So our town, 
the vice chair of this town of Fairmont Heights that's on the website of Prince George's County is Jacqueline Wadassi. And that is a citizen's concern. Would you like to see it, Mayor? Yes. Mm -hmm. This is the record of no meetings missed. Okay. And this is the charter. Okay. Is there a possibility I can get a copy of you this? You sure can. Okay. All right. I did it okay. for you one day this week. Okay. Oh. That's fine. Okay. All right. Good night. We're going to thank you all for your presentations. I have um, an agenda item that is not listed on the agenda here, but it was an issue that we were supposed to go back and review. Council members, I think it was last. Madam Mayor, I'm going to reserve time for Councilman Mahargo to come back and get the floor against the allegation. Oh, order. Order. okay. Here, here's what we're going to do. Okay, first of all, I'm trying to work your father in so we can talk about the issue concerning that that uh, Veterans Memorial, the sign. I want to get them in on that because I think, was it you and someone else coming to talk about that, Mr. Mars? Yeah. Okay, now we, we did have the copy. Did everyone receive your copy? You remember we had the, the printout, I think it was in last month's meeting. Mm -hmm that talked about the signage, the no parking signs. Mm -hmm. how, many, how many people had the opportunity to review? I read it. Did you all, so do you think we need some other clarity or what, what's the issue on I that? I was under the impression that we had already taken that we would wait until the new owner came and then consider what his, he or she's position would be in reference to the signs. I know we mentioned the new owner. Right. That yeah. was the, well, that was the okay. majority. But for me, I say keep the signs. Because if, if they were put there for a safety reason, mm -hmm. they should remain. OK. Uh, Mr. Morris, would you come forward and just give a summary about what's going on over there? And no, 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 no. The, OK. And the, the ownership and what the whole issue is, because the council received some information, but it was it was some clarity that was needed on it. Okay, the ownership of the property next uh, on 59th Place has nothing to do with it whatsoever. The signs on Veterans Parkway, they were put up to stop the hookers who were doing their business on the side of that street. The hookers are gone. Now what we have to address is that we've got people that have more than one car that need places to park, or if they have company, a place for their companies to park without a paying ticket. So what we're asking is that the no parking signs be removed since the main problem is not there anymore so that Tenants and people on both sides of the street that have company can have a place to park without being ticketed. Very simple. Mm. Okay, so it, I think the whole issue, going back to Councilmember Uck, was concerning. So who's the owner now? On that the side. Owner of what? It's the okay, so no, okay, this wasn't the 59th. That was, because I think I did get from your brother, I did get an email saying that it wasn't concerning 59th. Mm -hmm. This was the Veterans Memorial the Veterans side. Memorial. Okay. Correct. Okay. It has nothing to do with the property at 703 and 705 59th place. Two different entities, two different property owners. It has nothing to do with that property. Okay, I got it. Okay, so are there any other questions that we need clarity on while Mr. Morris is here so we can, you know, get back with them on, for, as far as some kind of answer is concerned because I'm, I'm talking to council members now. Any other item that we need clarity on? I don't need clarity. I mean, was it the parking issue? I, I mean, we keep addressing parking issues one by one. Community needs to be addressed as a whole. If the parking, if they need to be removed, I'm smart. You, you don't live in the town of Fairmont Heights, do you own property? No, here? we don't. We own okay. 700. I, 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 I understand. We live in 701.59 I understand. And we provide parking for three tenants behind 701.59 place. That's not the problem. The problem is if you have company, the company has no place to park. 
on both sides of the street. Again, the problem that we had with the hookers, it's gone. And what we're saying is, okay, let's, let's give the, the, these people who are basically paying taxes room to have a place to park and have a company to be able to park. Mm -hmm. Okay, so is there anything else that anyone needs before? And then we can, we actually going to have to come to some kind of consensus and then send that information back. You want that to go back to your brother, or how are you all doing this? Either way, he was not available to come tonight. That's, that's why uh, he's, he's not here. Okay. All right. So does everyone need any more clarity on that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. All right, so thank you. Man, I think the confusion was that the property that was sold was the signs were being taken down for that. What he's saying is the people that live in the apartment building had nowhere to park. Because part of the land that was sold is where they used to park. They mm -hmm. can no longer park there. Okay. So having that having the signs removed, you know, the signs are not being enforced anyway. Mm -hmm. So there's there, there would be no consequences to removing the signs because he's been trying to get the people that live there a place to park. Oh, okay. So okay, so, it? huh? Well, why aren't we hearing from them if they have a vote? Because vote. he owns the I'm building. sorry, I'm sorry, I'm directing my question. Yes. It's a hypothetical, I didn't ask for answer. Yeah, that's a smart remark. I'm not, okay. not a smart remark, so I was yes, talking to the mayor, and I was okay. not, it, was a, it wasn't a question. All me. right. I'm addressing you. It wasn't a question. Okay, we can, we can, we can come. to know where the individuals that live there, mm -hmm. I ask where they are. I was not speaking to them anymore. Okay. All right. So what we can do? What? Wait, hold on for one moment. What we can do is we need to come up with some kind of, of a, some kind of response that will go back to Mr. Curtis Mars, so that they can actually find out what's going to be done about those signs. Uh, can we can we get that finalized and sent back, uh, Mr. Rumi? Okay, so within the week, say within a week, can we get this finalized, council members? Yes. I think we need needs further discussion. Now, my concern again is we, where are the people that live there? Let's have a conversation with the people that live there. They live there. They live there, sir. They still have this. They, are they, the, they can rent or they can own, but they have rental type of uh, parking uh, issue as well. Renter, it, it doesn't matter whether you rent or not. When you park your car, if there's an issue, there's an issue. So what I'm saying to you, so I'm not disputing what you're saying, but I'm saying you're here. They're not. I would like to hear from them. We're representing, I'm representing them because they rent from me. Okay, well, I tell you what. We, okay. What we will do, uh, Mr. Rumi, I'm requesting that you go on and make the point of contact and let's get this resolved so that they can have the people there, the people that rent there can have an opportunity to pawn. I, I, I'm not clear on, on your forgiveness that you said the point of contact. Yeah, point of contact, the, the email that I got came from Mr. Curtis Mars, okay. not from Mr. Warren Mars, okay. but... I think both pe we, you know, we need to get either one. I think we have your contact information, and we have okay. his also. Okay. okay. So we'll we'll make sure that gets gets taken care of. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Miss. Mm -hmm. Go ahead.
Well, I for myself who lives right across the street, the hookers aren't gone. Right. They are not gone. They are not gone. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, all right, then, Mr. Rumi, did you have that basic? And I'll give you the email address for Mr. Curtis Morris, and then we'll, we have Mr. Warren Morris's uh, telephone number. Okay, we're going to, uh, did you have information that you, before we move on? Yeah, somebody else had a question. Okay. Place mm -hmm. is the one where the hill jumps way down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but Veterans Parkway yes. is what it empties mm -hmm. into. Mm -hmm. So, where is the parking affected? If you have people yes. on Veterans Parkway parked on both sides of the road, mm -hmm. that's going to uh, cause a problem because the road is not, not wide, wide enough, enough. Not to problem. cover. It's not a problem. Mm -hmm. Well, parking on both sides, it's not a problem. I don't agree they need to take because that road seven. is not that wide. That, that road is the same width as 97% of all the roads in front of And most of the roads don't empty into it. I'm just okay. 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 I'm clear what, what the park is. What street you're talking about. Mm -hmm. yep, yep, yep. Okay. Like three streets coming together. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, we hope to get some resolution within a week on that. Uh, I'm going to move on down, and uh, I had a few items. I'm going down to the mayor's report. Uh, one thing I wanted to note, you know, we had scheduled May 23rd. Yes, ma'am, Mrs. Folks. I just have a question. Um, mm -hmm. Ms. White presented, mm -hmm. so question. And the event when you go take care, you know, we are away. Mm -hmm. Who is going to be advice? Mm -hmm. Can we have an answer on who actually said that for Patrick? Why you want to Did she say May? May 30th. May 30th. Right. So, yeah. I let you before we go, mm -hmm. if you can pull it up, please. So, is, but yeah. so is that correct that Ms. Wood Dawson is the vice Miss folks, you know what? I'm I'm I am in a position and we've said I think the last thing that was said, I think at our work session, that that question came up and Councilmember Uck was saying, well maybe we should call the attorney back in to let him give clarity on that or you know, or either have do a conference call with him. We could do a conference. Huh? Okay. Okay. So, so we might have to wind up doing it that way. We can get him on a conference call. I can do that. No, no, no. Okay. 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 So here's what we we can't we cannot resolve this. We cannot resolve this from this point. We got to get somebody else because it's it's just not working this way. Okay. All right. Well, we're going like I said, then all this can be taken under consideration and we have to I think it's the best thing even if we do a conference call and get him on that line. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Well, we have 11 days and you have a legal document. See, you have that legal document extension 11 days if you have it open for consideration. No, no, but so that's that, that, legal document. No, but but what I'm saying, we need to get that we need to get that clarity and not Please, let, like I said, tonight we cannot resolve this. And, and, okay, huh? No, no, but I understand that. I understand that. But I'm going to give the opportunity to Council Member Uck to make a, a statement, then I'm going to move on because. Uh, she had her hand up first. I, I, okay. I yield to All right, deal to Council Member Waiters, then Council Member Uck. Um, this, Madam Mayor, this has been going on and on and on, Council Member. Um, mm -hmm. 
um, with Dawson was not here last week when we talked about this, and the issue still remains the same. The attorney does not have to come in here. The counsel was not removed from her seat. We cannot produce anything in documentation that says it was done right. She was presented with a letter that said that she, one, was sarcastic with you, and then the other point was that she missed the meeting. She was at, uh, she was at, she was at, she, she couldn't explain it further, but the justification that she gave was that she was at a meeting for census. Now, she was very diligently at that particular time going to external meetings, bringing us back information. What I am defending is that this body cannot present the documentation to remove her and until you can talk to the attorney, but until you can present the documentation where you removed her for the right reasons that are listed in the charter, Malfeas in the winter, it is here. You cannot change this. Until you can, she is the vice chair. And in your absence, okay. oh, wait, 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 let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. In, in the absence of, just what you must understand, because this is, being the mayor is no joke. It is no joke. It's no rally for a position. It's no rally for leadership. You have to handle it. We have handle things that don't even come to the council. So it's nothing to play with. In the absence of the mayor, the vice chair takes that position. Now, it flip flops because sometimes they want to say we got a weak mayor, not a strong mayor. When it's to certain people's advantage, we got a weak mayor. So strategically, when you move your favorable person into that seat, if we got a weak mayor, you move that person into a weak position, logically. And we keep going back and forth with this, but until they can present documentation to her that she was properly moved, she is still in that seat. Now, you're going to get rebuttal. You're going to get rebuttal. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, hold on for, for one moment, Ms. White. Let me get, Council Member Uck was the next person that's on the list to talk. Okay. And uh, go on, Council Member. Again, I think there's the confusion. Where is that? in reference to missing three sessions, that you are to be removed, that is your council seat. The vice chair was appointed by the, count, the mayor and council. Nope. Nope. We did not remove her from her council seat. Okay. All right. I'll tell you what, like I said, I, I don't, I don't, I do not expect to resolve this at this point from, because of the fact that we've been in this and we've been digging and digging in this for a few months now. So the only thing I could say, and then I will arrange it. I will get on the phone and I'll let him do a conference call. I will set that up ASAP. And you know that's public, right? Well, I mean, whatever it is, it's okay. It should be public. Yeah, it should it has be. To be. It should be public. It, it has to be. be. Well, we're talking about the prices and how we're going to be short money, but we're going to pay somebody three hundred dollars an hour, and not tell them how many hours we're going to be. No, he's he's not three hundred. No, he he's not going to come. I'm going to put him on a call. Put him on a call, and we could limit him to an hour. We have already so. Yeah, but so you have everything here. I, okay, all right, okay. Let me let me just like I said, I expect to. That's what I really expect to do is to is to get him, and then I will send him. First of all, I normally text him and say, "Are you available for a conference?" I'll do it as soon in the week as I can. I will get him on the line. So, Mayor, as a contingency, he'll leave it in 11 days. If he's not available, what's the contingency for? He'll be available, but he has someone else that works in that office that can, can answer. Okay. That's a, It's an organization. Okay. okay, I'm going to move on down. I wanted to talk about the, uh, the vaccine. You know, we had scheduled the vaccination. They were going to come and bring their whole group here. The county was doing it. It was going to be May 23rd. We only got six people to reply they needed the vaccine. So that has been automatically canceled by the county. Uh, the, the bulk mail, I mean, the bulk trash pickup on the 12th was absolutely great. 
And I hope that most people have the opportunity to put most of your items out because if you didn't, make sure that you get everything out by the 26th. That's our next day. Now, as far as the, the limit on the items, we're going to have to do some because a couple of people were not really fair. They were not fair in what they put out, so we're going to have to put some type of limit on the amount. And please bear in mind certain things like refrigerators and stoves and things like that. Most of the time, you can get Pepco to pick them up, or you can notify some of those people that pick up for bulk. They pick up the bulk metal items, and they will pick them up. So keep that in mind. Start doing your research so you can get that done. As far as administrative help is concerned, we are really in need of administrative help around here. I don't know how it's going to affect us as far as when we're planning, but we need some help to make sure that our telephones are manned, to make sure that all these little things, like when people have illnesses and all the things that are happening, we have somebody that can be plugged in. So we had, um, it's a company called Business Connect. And they came in to discuss what they could offer to the town and gave us a proposal. And we realized that in order to actually fill the position, we're going to have to put the bid out. Not a bid, but it'll be the application. You know, put our request for help so that we can get somebody in here that's going to be helpful to us as far as keeping our phones manned and day-to-day -day operations Monday through Friday. So I want everyone to know I'm working on that, and I'm working on getting us a clerk to the council again because of the fact that we need someone who's going to do all the, the copying, uh, make sure everything is in order, like those papers that I needed to be sent to the council, make sure they receive those in a timely manner because it's too much for me to do. And then a lot of time these things come late at night. I might, you know, so the person, whoever's the clerk to the council, they can man it and they can send it on out to the council. So there are a lot of things that really need to be done, but I just wanted everyone to know that I am working on those items. The next item is the trip to Tulsa, Oklahoma. This is being sponsored by the World, World Conference of Mayors and it begins on May 30th and it runs until June 3rd. I am planning on going. I want to go to represent the town for historic significance because this is a 100 year anniversary of Black Wall Street. And it's really significant that our community as a historic community founded in 1935, we are a big part of that and the historic trails and communities. So I'll be going there. I'll be bringing back information. I hope to take some pamphlets. I want to take the ones that I have here in the building that talk about the town and when we were incorporated and give some definitions about the kind of historic structures we have and all the things that give us positive coverage. I'm going to take those things in my suitcase. Um, Councilmember Morris had asked me, did I want to make some copies and send them on? But it's harder because when you're mailing things out, you don't know where it's going to land as to the person that's going to be manning the table or how you're going to do it. It's best to take it along with you in your bag. So I'm going to try to take at least probably about 50 handouts and, you know, I'll just give them to certain people as I, as I go. But I thought this was a, a great opportunity, and it's a great opportunity because you get the chance to network with the people who are doing the same things in their community as we do around here. I saw the information. We're in Edensville, Florida. They are the original, the first African-American community that was founded in the 1800s. So they really have the first significance. They are steadily expanding. When I was there two years ago, they have actually built, they have stores coming in now, and they just broke ground today on a new development center. So, you know, they're moving it. But that's, that's what it takes in order to be able to make your town successful. So uh, I wanted to let everyone know that, that was going on. There is another notice that came in today, and it's for the scheduled spray night notification for the mosquitoes. This is to notify you that your community, your community's scheduled spray night is Thursday, 
Spray season begins on May 26th and is anticipated to end September 28th. I'm going to give you a number where you can call the representative. That number is 301-422-5080. That's the office to Miss Stormy Keys. She's the representative. They say that the spraying will commence as soon as it is dark. As a precaution, we advise residents to stay inside their homes and close their windows while the spray truck is in the vicinity. Bring in any pets and remain in the home for 20 to 30 minutes until after the truck has passed by. If there are people outside when the truck passes by, no spray will be released and the truck will not make another pass down that street. The spray schedule will rotate every three weeks. That means that your community may or may not be sprayed every three weeks. The frequency will be determined by surveillance data collected and complaints received. Can so the number, again? the number is 301-422-5080. The it starts on May 26th and it'll be running till September 28th. Our scheduled spray night is on Thursday night. Normally they come about nine or 10 because they normally make sure it's dark. And these are the best, the specs that they, uh, they say contact this lady named Stormy Keys. Contact her if you have any questions. They, another thing they said, in order to determine if your community will be sprayed on a scheduled spray night, please contact our office on Thursdays between two and four to find out if we are spraying your community that night. We do not know any further in advance if you will be sprayed on any particular Sunday night. You may call or email. Let me give you her email address. It's stormy.keys at maryland.gov. Okay. Uh, there is um, some information that came in, and this just came in today. It's concerning the Prince George's County Public Art Bus Shelter Pilot Project. Now, we have already signed on to this. I think this is going into our second year where we're supposed to get a decorative bus stop. And Mrs. Dotson, is the lady's name is Taylor Dotson, she wants to have a meeting on Tuesday, June 15th for the bus, bus shelter review committee. And I think she wants to do it at 7 o'clock. If anyone is interested in working on this committee, we probably need about five people. I have one person already, but we need a few more people to work on this and talk about the design and the contractors that will be working on this project. So if you have a desire to be on this committee, please give us a buzz here. You can let Ms. Tucker know and I will call you back. And the, the light, last item is the um, I wanted to let everyone know that former council member Harry Saunders, I received word that he was in a terrible accident last night. So please pray, pray for him. They say he's, you know, it was really bad, really bad. Uh, the last item that I have is the PEPCO uh, public charging program. The licensing agreement has gone to our attorney he had one item that needed to be corrected on that. He's in the process of, well, Mr. You sent it, Mr. Room, you sent it to Mr. Uh, Ruffin, right? Yeah, so the attorney has already forwarded that information. It's gone to Mr. Ruffin from PEPCO. So we should come back with final information and be ready for final approval for the PEPCO charging station. So that's to the council. For you all to know that. See, now these kind of things, see, it comes in. It came in, came in here late this evening, but I made the copy and brought it down. But I didn't get a chance to do it for everybody because, like I said, we need somebody that could do that. So that's about it for my report. I wanted to just cover as much ground as I could. So I'm going to move down to council reports, and I'm going to start over here to my right, which would be Council Member Morris. Would you like to? Okay. Council Member Morgan. I um, just want to reiterate on the bulk pickup for the 26th, which is next week, um, Wednesday. Um, five items we decided. 
because I think the last time, I think everybody, most people put out their entire basement. Um, but we do have um, certain appliances and different things that we don't pick up. We don't pick up items that goes to the, um, what you call it, the scrap yard. Mm -hmm. So metal goes to the scrap yard, refrigerators goes to the scrap yard, um, toilet, different things like that. Appliance, um, mostly um, appliances, um, because you have to take the antifreeze out the refrigerators and if we were to put a refrigerator in the trash bin into the crusher it can blind somebody from the stuff that comes out of it so that's why you have things that will put out but we have some scrap guys that will be coming out that night so if folks put that stuff out it will be taken from those persons because and you can take your own scrap to the yard and get money they have the scrap yards. You pack your truck up. You can go at any time you have. Don't just let the other people take your scrap. Take your own scrap and get your own few coins from them. But like I say, it will be some folks riding the neighborhoods the night before when everybody's gonna put their lovely stuff out to be taken. Again, please try to limit five items this time. Everybody put all their stuff out their basement. Uh, last week. Question. Mm -hmm. yes, I, in the alley, somebody, you know, somebody, um, they moved and they threw a soap and a whole bunch of stuff in the alley. And Which alley? Somebody, um, Which alley? Alley between 60th Place and 61st Avenue. 60th Place. 600 block. And 60th Avenue? Yeah, between that alley, between them. Okay. I'll get that picked up on Tuesday. Um, so again, night before, not at the last minute, while the truck running, going down the street, please tell your folks to try to, and try to look out for your neighbors who are elderly. Maybe if you got young sons or somebody, put on some gloves to see if you can help the neighbors who can't get their stuff out. We all have the elderly people that live on our streets. We know who they are. We know who needs some help. And can you come around and help me? It's like, I got a young son. <laughs> but if you need some help, you can call me. I have a young son also. My number is 301-537-0041. And yeah, I'll put him out there to help a couple of people just until he go to bed. I beg your pardon? Sure. You got my number? Okay. <laughs> also, um, I got something from Angela Osselbrook today. They're giving out meals uh, at C. Pleasant Elementary School at 6411 G Street, C. Pleasant, Maryland, May 21st at 1230 p.m. And Faith Temple number two, Free Will Baptist Church, 211, Maryland Park Drive, Capitol Heights, Maryland. Those two are May 21st at 1230 p.m. Then on Saturday, May 22nd at 10 a.m., Love A.M.E. Church at Capitol Heights Elementary School at 601 Suffolk Avenue in Capitol Heights. And the second place is First Baptist Church of Highland Park at 6801 Sheriff Road, and that's in Landover. So you can go and get your free meals. You can put your bulk out, and then go get your free meals on these two days, 21st and 22nd. Um, 10 o'clock in the morning. Highland Park is every Saturday. Oh, it is? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, they must got a whole bunch of stuff to get out this time. Oh, okay. So you drive up like the rest of them? Yeah, well, I didn't want to Oh, it's produce. Well, they must got some extra stuff to give out this time, maybe, since they um, broadcasting it. But it came off of...
Oh, okay. And so they've been doing it every, 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 every since COVID. COVID. Since COVID. Since every COVID. Okay, every so weekend. it came out on Angela Also Books website. Mm -hmm. See, all mm -hmm. her little happenings. So I'm, I'm assuming this is a part of her program. So that's my report. Okay. Oh, the other thing is we're having a memorial on the 31st, which is Monday, the 31st, down at the monument. Um, anybody who would like to volunteer, please let me know at that number, 301-537-0041. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Ock. Good evening. I know everybody's been waiting for me. <laughs> uh, report is from 4 2021 through 5 2021. I attended all meetings held with the with the exception of April work session due to miscommunication as to how it was going to be held. April 27, we held I held a virtual meeting with Major Waddy of the Prince George County Police Department along with Lieutenant Ivy, Council Members Hargrove, Morgan. Major Waddy informed us that although third district has been split. They have less officers there. But she assured me that Fairmont Heights would continue to be covered. I then made a request of Major Wadi for her assistance in selection of our police chief for our police department. Her reply was it would need to be put in writing so that she may request authorization from her supervisor. That was done. Letter was sent to the attorney for approval, which copies were given at work session to each council member. It also was recorded in work session and approved to, to be sent out. Her response uh, as to her as well as to Lieutenant Simmons of the Mount Rainier Police Department. Once we hear back from them, we will be scheduling a Q&A where the citizens will have the opportunity to voice their desire for the type of police department that they would like to have. And that would be the end of my report. Okay, thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Hargrove. Um, for my report, I'm going to be reporting on the World War II Memorial. Um, the, uh, we've sent up the uh, repairs and uh, updates to the Veterans Memorial uh, to the county. Uh, they will be having a meeting in June. Uh, hopefully, we'll get uh, their approval back for the uh, vet. Got to think of it. Favorites. They'll be getting their approval for um, the upgrades to Memorial in June, um, and then we can get started on that. And again, I'm asking for all veterans uh, who passed um, and also veterans who are still here because I'm getting information, and I'll go down on my next one. If you have any veterans that have passed, I'm asking for your name, for their names. Uh, we are talking about adding names to the Veterans Memorial, not only for the World War II Memorial, but we have that wall there where um, at the Veterans Committee, they asked that we recognize all veterans from all wars. So we could use the wall, not the World War II Memorial, uh, to add those names. And the reason that I'm also asking for veterans' names in the community, um, uh, Congress on March 11th approved a 1.9 trillion American Rescue Stimulus Package through VRRAP and the Veterans Administrations where they will help with uh, 12 month tuition fees and housing. So that's, and that's free to veterans. So if there's veterans in the community and you wanna go to school, um, there's help for you. You just have to know where to look um, that's some information that um, I'm having. Let me give you this number. The number is 888-442-4551. And that's, um, that number is to the Veterans Education Center. So there's money out there if you would like to go to school and other training. Um, May 
uh, Fourth was uh, well, the month of May is Men's Mental Health Month through the veterans, and they had a virtual uh, meeting for men um, to talk. And they also have other programs that, if you need that, that you can get the help that you need through that. So um, I just wanted to put this information out. There's other information through the uh, committees that I'm that I'm on as far as um, through. Uh, the Veterans Administration of Prince George's County and uh, Sister Warriors and things like that where I get information that I think is helpful and I'll be passing that along to the community. So please, if you know a veteran, um, you know, leave his name, his number, and if there's a veterans this past, and especially coming up for Memorial Day, we want to honor our veterans in our community. So um, that concludes my report. Okay. Thank you very much, Council Member. Mm -hmm. Uh, Council Member Waiters. Yes, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. Um, real quick, Mr. Bermie. Sorry. Mr. Bermie mentioned the um, arts grant that um, she'd applied for for the $15,000. $5,000 of that. Uh, $15,000 is for administrative support, wherein they will come in and help us with a concept, even though those things have been listed. Those things have been listed. We could get administrative help to implement. So I wanted to make. Um, Point of that to add to what she's already said. In addition to that, we um, are waiting, have had communication with the Prince George's County Community, um, sorry, Prince George's County Arts, them, uh, Commission um, for a community art show. At this particular time, Prince George's County Public Schools is doing the virtual art uh, shows for various different grades um, for elementary school, middle school, and high school. Um, and the first art show that I was able to do was uh, the art from those our community schools was donated when we transitioned the municipal center um, into art space that was interactive and some of that art hung. Um, same opportunity is there, but I mentioned that because we are scheduling a virtual art session where the community will be able to do an interactive painting uh, session with um, the individual that's assigned to us from the um, Prince George's County Community Art Association, or um, get their name wrong, because I'm looking at PGC in May. Um, uh, the grant, Mr. Romy, I wanted to let you know the grant, I thought it was the 1st of, of uh, May, that we would find out something, it's June, mm -hmm. June the 1st. Um, I think I sent that to you in an email. Yeah. Economic development, the 4.4 acres, um, I shared in work session my concern with the the, the gunshots, the bullets, um, my mom, her window being shot through when she was living in the house that I um, now own, uh, which I invested. Um, the four point acres I'm concerned. Um, sometimes we're not in there, but we're supposed to be fenced off and secured. Um, I'm afraid that you know, it's now contributing to and it needs to be fenced off. So I'm asking that that be a priority while we are considering economic development on that property that it is secured and, and um, fenced off, and so we should seek bids and or um, whatever we need to do to secure that property off, is my suggestion. Um, that is the biggest, the next, let's say, biggest development in the community outside of the Main Street or um, Concept of Eastern Avenue. I appreciate the uh, Citizens Association, did I say it right? Working um, with us concerning attending our meetings for economic development and their input um, for the economic development efforts, but that is my number one concern. Um, I also counseled the economic development meeting for this month because there's so much going on on the county level, and I was attending meeting, and it's, it's so much information that I want to bring back for our next meeting that we can discuss because there's development going on all around us, and we want to complement and or be a part of that. So I wanted to get as much information as I could to share um, with those members that do attend the meeting. One in particular is the map that I keep talking about that drills down to show us a various different sustainable position for economic growth in other areas, but it's a drill down layered map and you have to be on um, the meeting for you to see how it drills down in various different areas and how we're covered. Um, I think that's it with the 4.4. I um, also wanted to say, put this, pin this right here, that neighbors, Councilmember Wood Dawson has mentioned this, neighbors are moving out of the community. We're losing members. Um, I would like to schedule a stakeholders meeting for the month of June, July. July for um, the community, 
to have input on various different economic development in our growth, particularly the 4.4 acres and Main Street. PGC and Major says a note is, um, it's a committee that falls under MML that represents the Prince George's County, uh, all of the municipalities, the 27 that's been mentioned here before, and we're one of those municipalities and they meet monthly. Um, so and nobody was going to the meeting and I started going to the meetings. Um, there is a meeting scheduled for Thursday at 7 o'clock, FYI. Um, I'll get the information out um, if anybody's interested. District 24, which is inclusive to Fairmont Heights, had a listening session on last night. Um, we invited Mr. Prince George's County Democratic Central Committee for our community to be able to receive information in terms of legislation that has been passed either on the county council or on uh, the legislative district. Senator Benson was available to speak with us. Uh, the delegate, Andrew Harris, um, our delegate, Dad Lewis, was there to provide information on the, the things that they've advocated to pass, have gotten passed, or even did not get passed. Um, council member um, uh, Jolene Ivey was on the line. Uh, county council at large, Mel Franklin, was on the line and had a plethora of information that he provided. Um, and council member, did I say Jolene Ivey? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Belinda Queen. Um, coincidentally, I invited her to give us an update on our education in our meeting tonight, but she was on the line as well doing the same thing. So coincidentally, she was um, in that meeting and you could have heard. The Zoom meetings, Madam May, I meant, mentioned this before when Ms. Bam was here. We've held several Zoom meetings, particularly the African American, Women's History, and several other meetings that Ms. Bam was responsible for um, when she was um, administering our Zoom meetings. Those files have to be uploaded to YouTube. We don't have the account information. And so, and now that she's not here, I know how to do it, but those are public meetings that need to be uploaded for public viewing. Okay. Um, I'll come back to that one. Um, the Green Team Mississippi Newsletter. We do a periodic newsletter to inform um, citizens of what we're doing as, in terms of special projects and or just to inform. Um, our focus is on composting and we've been talking about um, some demonstration, healthy eating demonstrations. I won't go into that, but those are two ideas that we'll talk about in the Green Team meetings, but we are entertaining the uh, farmer's market. And I also want to mention, well, composting. I forwarded this to you, Madam Mayor, as well as Mr. Rumi. Composting and food waste reduction is $2 million for local governments to host community compost and food waste reduction pilot project, projects. Vaccines, you mentioned the vaccines that we were supposed to do on the 6th, Madam Mayor, I had information and I forwarded that to Ms. Um, Tucker. We had six people that signed up. Those six people registered with us this past weekend, got on to that registration, and I think they were vaccinated this past weekend rather than um, the one that we were supposed to have because you didn't have enough people. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm gonna close with this one. I mentioned this in work session, I'm missing in the public and I don't know where it came from. Um, but a letter was written and it had my name in it, and this is like the third time my name has come up in a meeting. My name comes up, comes up in a meeting with something that I don't know about. I feel the, the, the urge to have to defend my honor. I'm not gonna do that tonight, but I do wanna make mention that a letter was sent to Prince George's County Democratic Central Committee some cases they say have nothing to do with us, but have a whole lot. I just don't understand why a letter would be sent when I'm representing my community twice, would be sent to try to defame my character with accusations that's in this letter that are not true. So I'm preparing my response. I'm preparing my response to uh, something that Council Member Hargrove read into public record. I've asked for a copy of it, haven't gotten it. Council Member Uck, Hargrove, and Morris, and Morgan read something into public record, mentioned my name. I'm waiting for that to be presented to me in writing so that I can respond to that. And last but not least, my response to the letter that was sent to PGCMA, um, I mean, I'm sorry, Prince George's County Democratic Central Committee, where I am an, an additional elected official representing my community and others. I was referred to as a portion of a council duo, and I kind of sort of like 
as a result. Uh, a portion of the council, we're, we're labeled as the council de duo, the council duo. Mm. So we kind of like it. So we just, we're going to brand that. If we're a duo and it makes it seem like we're doing what we need to, which we are, we work hard to try to do what we need to do for the community. So if we're being branded with being the council duo, we accept that. So I put it on a shirt, we put it on a shirt, we're gonna wear that proudly. We'll be the council duo trying to get things done for the community, and that's my response to that letter. Hmm. The end. Okay. Good evening. All right, thank you. Uh, council member with that. Yes, uh, I attended the Earth Day, which was very informative about rain barrels and different way to plant. Uh, you can plant even on top of a box and uh, start things. It was very informative to me. As well, uh, I visit the churches a lot um, that was read in regard to produce being given out. I try to go out and get as much as I can and those that are in need, I redistribute um, back into the community to seniors that are in need as well as a lot of seniors in the community get uh, different uh, produce and things from interacting with UCAP as well, and that's male or female. So if you know any senior in need, my number is 301-407-5217. At any time they have a need as far as uh, they'll get produce, they'll get a bag with personables like lotion, deodorant, uh, footies, diabetic socks, just different things. Um, that come from UCAP, they'll bring it directly to your door. Um, I was also in the, on the uh, Democratic Central um, virtual call last night, and that was very informative. They were saying, we're getting ready to have a ribbon cutting at the new hospital in June. So it'll be a walkthrough on June the 12th for people to come and see what's going to be done for us in the community. They also mentioned, uh, as she was saying, Belinda Queen, she mentioned Central High School is going to be rebuilt and brand new as well as Walker Mill Middle. Mm -hmm. And Senator Benson um, elaborated on the elder abuse bill that is going to be recognized because seniors are being abused in nursing homes and in their private homes. So if that is known or knowledgeable to anyone, my number as well can be used as an advocate to pass it on confidentially. So, you know, certain things, if we don't stand for something, we'll go for anything. So <laughs> this, this really needs to be elaborated on. And, um, I guess that's my report. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you all very much. First of all, thanks to everyone for your time and your patience because we've had a long evening. We're going to, uh, since we finished all the council reports and I've done my report, we're going to continue for public participation if someone has a burning issue or something for the good of the organization. Would you please just, and, and would you please do it in an orderly fashion so that one person comes up at a time and just go one by one. And you know, each person gets an opportunity to address. Okay, um, I, I gave you a dose, there were three of us. These candles, these these brushes, these I'm, uh, I'm, I'm the chair of the Black Committee, and Ms. Hill and Ms. Brunson got in touch with me about uh, an ongoing COVID situation situation. Both of them I heard earlier um, in the meeting, I guess Mr. Peter's report was that he did cite the, uh, the Elms Lodge, and he cited um, Fannie Mines' um, property. However, the problem is that I know in Miss Hill's case, she's been, been having these problems with these rats for over two mm -hmm. years. And in Miss Brunson's case, I think she's pointed out her problem 
And she has some pictures in her, on her phone that she can, uh, if, if, if it's some part the members of council want to see. But what, what, I, what I need to know right now, and I have as an example the, uh, the half house that, that was mentioned in Mr. Pinkman's report that was demolished um, in April. Now, um, people on 60th place have been trying to get that half structure demolished for over 10 years. And it wasn't until we asked a white woman to um, help us that it immediately came down. Is that true? Um, uh -uh. Is that true, Mrs. Barnhart? That, that's not I true. Me I had a meeting with her, and I, I uh -uh. asked you if that happened. Yeah, it's not and true. Anyway, it's not okay, true. Well, let me, okay, I, continue, continue. I, I'm going to continue. Yeah. Because I believe that Miss Miss Hill and Miss Bronson's problem should be solved in 30 days. And I, I, I think that someone with the mayor council should tell Ms. Ms. Hill and Ms. Brunson what your process is. With that half house, the, 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 Mr. Pinkney had cited, had, had, had been citing that, that pe those people for years, but he did not take the next step of, of ordering it demolished and, and, and the owner is, is going to be, have a lien put on or something. Um, Ms. Brunson and Ms. Hill deserve the same treatment. The Elks have had that, um, had, had, had those buildings and, and those, hop, those rat harbors for years, right? Those half sheds and whatever. And Mr. Pink had the nerve last week to call me and tell me that my compost pile, that Ms. Hill told him that my compost pile was contributing to the rent. And that is not true. So, I, you know, I, also, when I tried to call Mr. Pinkley today, the uh, town's voice phone phone messages system, his name isn't, isn't in there. You, so you can't reach the code of court at all. Ms. Walker. And Ms. Walker, Ms. Walker's name is the, I mean, the mayor and council need to facilitate the, 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 the people in this town, especially when the town is so blighted and so dirty. But, but Ms., Ms., Ms. Hill and Ms. Brunson can talk, but I, would like for someone to tell them what the process is and assure them that if, if, if these terrible situations that they're suffering and all the, the, the vermin and rats that they're suffering, that the town will move forward if the owners don't correct it and get it corrected and, and find them and, and assess them and take their property. Just like we did with that half house. Would y'all let y'all go on? Uh, okay, yes. okay. My name is Cynthia Bronson, mm -hmm. and I live 610 6th Avenue. I'm complaining about my neighbor next door, which is 608. Mm -hmm. And in July, this will be a whole year. Last time I was here, I complained about the same thing, and nothing has been done. Their backyard is a mess. Okay. I mean, they got weeds and stuff going on the side of the house. They got cars in the backyard that don't have tags on them. And they also got these two big uh, camper things in the backyard. I talked to Mr. Pinkley yesterday, and he told me that he talked to one of the daughters that's staying in the house, and she told him the house was off for probate, and they didn't have no money to clean it up. I don't care. It takes years and years for probate. All I ask is them to clean up their yard. When I uh, removed my shed, which had went bad, I had mouse all into my shed when I removed the shed. 
because of their legs. I want you to see this picture. I heard her call on uh, 608, but I didn't know what did you say, what did uh, you say about what he said. I'm gonna show you these pictures. Okay. And I've been living in this house for 26 years. Mm -hmm. And these kids are staying over there. Their father is deceased mm -hmm. and it will be a year in July. And they're not doing nothing but the, to the property. Okay. Okay. Now this is a side of the fence where all the weeds uh -huh. are growing up. Uh -huh. But this is nothing here. Okay. And he tells me that they don't have no money to clean it up. That's not my problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, if the house is in probate at some point, there must be the mines. The mines house. Okay. 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 And I'm very close next to them because, okay, start. And slide it on down. This okay. is their backyard. Oh, Lord have mercy. Ooh. And this has been going on for a year. Mm. I'm close to them because the property that my house sat on used to be Miss Miles' grandmother, and she sold the land, and my house was built on uh, the property. So that's why I'm very close to them. Mm -hmm. And he tells me that they don't have no money and the house is in program. It'll be two or three years. I just want the yard clean up. Yeah, yeah, okay. Is this theirs or is this yours? This is theirs. This is this is part of my uh, yard. That's, That's your shed. yard, yeah. And these are the cars in, in, in the yard. On the side, yeah, okay. don't have no tags. Okay, okay. And there's two trailers back there on the pictures. You see the pictures? Okay. He told me that he had taken pictures and he presented them here, so I don't know. Okay. All right. I did hear something. Was you, did you have some kind of complaint about a tree? Was it your back? Cause I, I did, I did hear about that. No, I didn't complain about the tree. I oh, that was something. The yard. Okay. All right. So okay. So now that's another oh, thing. These, these are the two campers back there. Oh, okay, I see that there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then okay. Okay. And this is this is. Oh. This is the backyard. Oh, okay. 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 Mm -mm -mm. okay. And last time I was here, mm -hmm. I complained about the same thing. In yeah. July, okay. it be a year. Oh. Uh, Ricky's been gone a year. Okay. And he has two daughters that stay in there in the house. Mm -hmm. in okay. All right, so I'm going to put I this I just in. want the yard cleaned up because mm -hmm. I don't live in no ghetto. Oh, I understand. You know, I understand. I don't want to be living Is in there a possibility I can get your telephone number? Three zero one. Uh huh. Nine two five. Uh huh. Seven nine five one. Okay. All right. And your last name is Brunson. B R U N S O N. Yes. Okay. I live six ten. Okay. Okay. All right, so I'll be back. Please, I'm, I'm gonna really have him to call you because he's coming for us, but I'll definitely get with him. And Mr. Rumi? Well, I yeah. talked to him yesterday. Did you? And he told me that he talked to one of the daughters that stayed there, mm -hmm. and she was saying the house was up on probate and they didn't have no money to clean up the yard. I told him that's not my problem. Okay, okay. All right, so he's gonna have to talk with Mr. Rumi too because she's the town manager. and. Between us, we gotta try to work out. Ms. Bronson, Ms. in uh, reference to your question, he does have them uh, here having issued a notice of violation and corrective action. Did he give them a notice? Yes, according to this. Yes. Okay. So how? What, so when is see. the notice over? What, what is the time I know that I don't have a detail. Sylvia, please. Sir, she's she's breaking it down for us. 
she she wants to know and 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 this is number two. They got to know this. So and how how long do they have to correct it? And if they don't correct it, they'll be found at it. Well, see, that's that's the thing that we need the code enforcement officer to say one way or the other because I don't know what the, the timelines are, and I'm not going to sit here and say that I do. So we need to make sure we coordinate the timing between him and the residents, you know? And I did. I talked with you, Miss Hill. I didn't know who you were for all the masks and everything on and everything and the glasses, but yeah. But uh, I talk with you, and I don't know whether you've heard anything else from Mr. Pink, because I know that he did meet with Mr. Um, whoever the person is at Bruce Evans. And yeah. So I don't know what action, because he said something about what had happened with the shed, and you know, I don't know what else has transpired since then. So you you could probably update us. Uh, we met up. Okay, okay. All right. Yes. Yes. I came here in 2018 with the problem of the roads. I talked to Mr. Pickman. Uh, I assume you want to take care of him. Since then, I've taken videos. I went to Mr. Pickman, showed him about the video. I talked to the chief of police back in 2018. We came to my house, walked the property, and saw the rats just playing tag back and forth, back and forth. Now, 2021, seven. Seven rats were in my wall. Mm. No, rats. Mm. Rats. Oh, God. Rats. Mm. At 2 o'clock in the morning, I hear them running, playing tag. Mm. During that time, I had someone to come to my home, dig three feet down, concrete all around my home. That didn't stop me. I'm going to debate boxes. Boys did everything. Now, I talked to Mr. Pete, and I wish he was here. Mm -hmm. He needs to be here. Mm -hmm. He needs to be here. Mm -hmm. I, sent, I sent an email to the council women in the bear about my problem. Now, my question is, did anyone forward my email to the lodge? Mm. Actually, I am not he sure. Was, he was to have schedule a meeting with the lodge, and as far as I, my understanding is that he, as well as Lieutenant Ivy, did have a meeting with the lodge, mm -hmm. and they have been instructed in reference to clean up, or there's a possibility we might have to shut them down. Okay. The reason why I asked about the email. I had a conversation with Mr. Pinkman. And from my understanding, I might be wrong, but I don't think I am. He forwarded my email to the lodge. Why he did that, this is a mystery to me. Mm. And I explained to him, I'm single, I live alone, and I would think common sense. Mm. Being a man, common sense sometimes don't work that way. For well, him, that's it. I was thinking when you for my email to the person I'm complaining about. He should have got up off his behind, did his job, came round to the lodge to see what was going on. My problem was the shed. I had rats, they were rats were running from the shed to my property back and forth. But it's like, when does this, I'm doing everything I can possibly do to keep my property the way it should be. Every day I'm outside cleaning the block because that's where I live at. Mm -hmm. But for Mr. Pinkney to, like, it's, it's like he doesn't understand his job. And if he doesn't understand his job, somebody needs to take the job from him and do his job. Because he's not doing it. Mm -hmm. Because if he's doing it, he would be, he would be stressing on his problem. Mm -hmm. From 2018, if he was here in 2018, from 2018 to 2021, I think that he would have done something. Just something. But he wanted me to do his job. Do his job. He wanted me to call him 
when I saw the president of the year, of the, of the, um, of the lodge. That's not my damn job. That's your job. That's your job. That's it. I'm not getting paid. I, I'm retired. I want peace. That's all I'm asking for, 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 for peace in my home. Peace in my home. And for Mr. Pete to do his job. That's it. Now I got to go home. Dark. The restaurant. Oh, okay, the restaurant. And I got to go past that. And I'm saying to myself, where is he at? He should be here. But he's not. So I would like to speak to someone with Mr. Pinkney and someone else because something needs to be done. Something needs to be done. I'm only, I mean, it's only fair. It's only fair. Nobody wants rats in their home. No, definitely not. That's true. So, yeah, just, just to close out, you all said earlier in the report that they don't pay tax, they don't pay property taxes, and I think somebody said they made something like close to sixty thousand dollars last year because they, they do have have a lot of food and whatever. They even um, gave away meals on the town's behalf. The town just should not allow. It's obvious what needs to be done. If you look at Ms. Hill's property, it's clean. Yes, it is. It, it, it's clean. If you look at my property, it's clean. If you look at Councilwoman Hargrove's property, we're all in the same vicinity. It's clean. If you look at Paul's liquor store, I mean, is that the name of it? Yes. Yeah. It's clean. And these people have, have, they don't live there, they don't pay any taxes, and they sell food and make a lot of money. And the town, in addition to the business license that they qualify, I don't know whether they qualify because they're nonprofit, but nonprofits aren't exempt from the code, are they? No. And no. this should be this should be taken care of immediately, and so should Ms. Bronson. But I, I will say this to you both. I have uh, obtained some ordinances because our ordinances don't give us the ability to go and say and put a lock on somebody's door and shut them down. And I would want you to do that. I, I, mm -hmm. And I understand that. But right now, um, I don't know if he did get in contact with the health department, but I did ask him to do so to have them go over there as well. Because although we might not be able to shut them down, if the health department goes in there and see the conditions of that lodge, they will be able to shut them down. Mm -hmm. But I have. Mm -hmm. I guess what I'm saying is, it's not we're not as concerned about the food service as the harbor for the rats to well, shed. And the same way that that on 60th place, the town, because the, the owner ignored the citations, the town last April, uh, last month, just cleared the cleared the lot, and it looks decent. So. I hope that the town can, if they don't, if, if, they, if, 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 if they don't demolish the shed or, or clean it up, that the town will do it. In addition to what you're saying about the health and the food. Mm. Well, the shed has been torn down. Uh, it took it down, I guess, last week. Oh. Yes. Now, okay. my, my, see, the other problem I'm having is, well, Mr. Pinkney, I assume, forwarded my email to the, to my neighbor. Mm -hmm. Then I have a problem with my neighbor. Okay. He worked. He said he worked shit to the game, but he, but he did that. I'm sorry, he did. He had no right to send my email or the plane to, to, to the person that complained about. Oh, oh. I got a problem with them. And and it's mm -hmm. I'm saying, you know, I would think that he would have said, okay, well, let me just go around and do my job, or let me send another email. Mm. Not my email. Mm. Not my email. Mm. Well, I'm just saying my email. Mm. That don't make sense. Mm. So mm. I just, mm. Mm. I just want to thank everybody for this. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Hill. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, God. I have one more thing to say uh, mm. about Mr. Pittman. Mm -hmm. He also told me yesterday when he went over there to approach these young ladies. Mm -hmm. He told them that I was the complaint. And they said to him, well, we family. Why she didn't come say something to me? Like I told him, this is not my place 
to say anything to them that you need to get up there and clean up your yard. Plus, these girls are young. They're like 18 and 24 years old. Mm -hmm. So now they have an attitude when I go out my door, they look at me and they don't even speak, which I don't care. Mm -hmm. Because I'm complaining because mm -hmm. I live, my property is clean. You can come by my property anytime. Mm -hmm. And you see how my property looks. Right. And I don't want to be living next to a bunch of dirt and gathering. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. All right. See you, Ms. Hill. All right. We oh, my God. You don't is, there, is there anyone else that has anything for the good of the organization? Yes, Carmel. Um, I only have two, two questions. Mm -hmm. And the first one is a possibility for this. Mm -hmm. There is um, the property, the First Baptist Church of Fairmont Heights is on that corner. Coming toward 59th Avenue, uh -huh. that big house there, the big blue house that yeah. they paid for, and the property uh -huh. right behind it that lands on 59th and J. Mm -hmm. She is building a huge compound. This should, what, what's the, what's the um, position on, on um, building this? The question was asked of me by a neighbor, and I don't have no idea, but I'm also, um, you know, it's also a question for me. What is she what, building? I don't know what she's building. It looks like a little stock house, something. It's, it's wood all over, it's tall. Okay. And well, the, the lot right behind it that lands at 50. Yeah. Right. So um, I know that land, and basically, I haven't been through there in a couple of days, but from when I, the last time I went, it was cleared off. But like she, somebody was about to make a garden yeah, or something. But, she but put more uh, couches and stuff like that that's uh, on there. Yeah. Actually, um, my husband took the initiative to advise her that she needed to remove that uh, storage that she had on that lot. Oh, she was using it for storage? I, I don't know, but it was couches, chairs, oh. tables, all kinds of, it looked like stuff she was throwing away. Oh, okay, okay. Maybe a staging area or something, is that what she was doing? I, 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 don't, I don't know. know. Okay. In the yard where she lives, uh -huh. there is a big thing that looks like a, a old fashioned it's a no, 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 is her address on it for building permit? Is her address on it for building What is the problem with the current vice chair? Um, okay, actually, I'm asking because I really don't know. Okay. Okay, no, because you haven't really been around, That's what but I'm yeah. What happened. what happened is now this, I think this happened last year. The council had taken a vote to change the ch vice chair from, it was council member Wood Dodson, and the vote was taken to change to council member Hargrove. So it's been, you know, ongoing, and we had the attorney in, it's been discussed many times, but it hasn't really come to fruition as far as moving forward. Mm -hmm. That's what the problem, that's what the problem was, the change in the, and the vice chair. And so yeah. until I give the attorney and shed light on this, uh -huh. that means that Councilwoman Wood Dawson still occupies that position, correct? Until the attorney advises otherwise. Yep. No. The attorney didn't advise him. He did yeah, not. Yeah, exactly. He did not. He wrote the letter and he wrote the letter. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. I don't okay. have a letter from the attorney. And I don't we, remember him giving a letter. We said that under all circumstances, our governing factor is the charter. And we cannot just haphazardly midstream. Now, when my, elect, my, my seat is up this next right. year, yes, it is. and next it's year right. would move me. I, got it. I have a copy of this. Will move me, but I was not given a letter from the attorney. 
I remember that. I remember that. I, I wasn't that given was a letter. Yeah. What, I what, that what was, was said to me is okay. that the council, the council decided. Point of, point of order. She's trying to give an explanation. There's a whole lot going on. You've been talking a whole lot. Yeah, but you're being disrespectful. disrespectful. Yeah, and you, and you, giving them she, but she, she, not, she didn't ask you for that. Who gave she's it? Respond, it to she's responding to a question. Okay. Okay. If this is information that was taken, and that, from what I'm understanding and seeing, is where in a closed meeting or an executive meeting, notes were taken. I've been asking for notes, notes, minutes, and anything that would interject or show why I am wrongfully being accused of missing meetings. When I wasn't at the meeting, I took... Um, Mr. Barnhart with me, being that they would be affiliated with the census when that was done. I was on town business. I've been on the council this year 16 years. In 16 years, unless it was a medical emergency, which I had a daughter that was sick, that was the only time I left a meeting. But as far as three consecutive meetings, in 16 years, I have not missed three. Not even when I had surgery. I came back on a cane. So if the liars, and I'm not calling out names, but you wear the hat that fit well, you know, can deal or bring some documentation stating by word of mouth, are we going to do like everywhere else because you just decide? I mean, we ought to burn, have a charter burning. Because what you're telling me is forget the charter because I decide if that's the case and we just haphazardly do what need to be done, then we need to document and make it known publicly. This is being recorded, correct? Okay, let it be known that when you stand together and you're uneven with your wrongdoing, realize that that same dirt is going to follow you to the end. Now, I can stand firm in my stand with what I've done and what I'm doing. I'm not here because it's just the best thing in the world to do. I've been volunteering and doing before I got on this gravy train that they think is so ultimate. Most that I'm sitting with work with me, and now they've turned their back. Who cares? I'm going to do what I was sent to do. And I must stay here until my time is up. I have been re-voted back whether whoever like it. The people put me here. I didn't walk in here and take over. I didn't walk in here and take over. And on that, I rest my case. Do what you want to do. Do what you want to do. Don has been requesting foyers and presenting foyers. Ask for the foyer. Here are the minutes, and here's the letter that And I've said. been asked so for it for what? two the years. Mayor, the we mayor has, has had a copy record. of it. Now, can we read it in the public record? Can, can it be you read? Have a copy of the mayor. We have a copy of. Can we read it in the public record? They had a copy. Read it in the public record. I've never had it. Uh, I've never had it. Point of order. Point of order. Can it be read? Point of order on anybody that's doing it. Point of order. Point of order. I'm asking that she read it in the public record. She keep bringing it up. This letter, the, the reason that I haven't read it is because the mayor asked me at work session not to. Uh, well, the mayor has wrote. a copy. Read the she mayor wrote. waiter Man. said she has a copy. Yeah. Everybody got a copy I from the attorney. It. Here's the minute. Not ask yet. for the, wait a minute. No. Ask no. for, ask the for a lawyer to get the minute. The attorney okay. can't do it. Okay, okay. The attorney okay. can't now, do it. Now listen, we we have we discussed this time when Miss White started discussing it this evening. This is not the way to solve this, and it has to come to some resolution. My point is, I am already scheduled for a flight for May 30th, and unless unless it's the will of God, I plan on going. So there has to be some resolution because I'm listening to what is going to be the right thing. And what is that? Now, no, it has to be. 
what is the okay. right thing? Look, are we abiding like by I the said, charter? Like I said, are we abiding by the charter? We are. We, that's what we're supposed to abide oh, okay. by is the charter. Okay. So, so I'm so gonna abide by the charter for every issue, right? Everything. Let's everything. Let's everything. Let's okay. So open and, and people's personal house. And open. Let's not be late. I'm requesting a copy of what was presented for me. I've never had it. I thought you had no. I don't. I've been asking for paperwork for two years, for two years. So now you present something that I'm told. I even gave you a letter, and you answered me back with going into the charter. And if I'm going into the charter, my stand is correct. So I would like a copy, if I could, of what what has been said to be given to me no later than tomorrow morning. Otherwise, you're holding back evidence uh-huh. that I've asked for. Uh-huh. So maybe I it's need open. to acquire legal counsel, okay. which okay. I can do. I'll make sure by tomorrow I have it, and then I can, can you get it. Can go upstairs it. and make it on your way out? Make a copy and put it in? You can put it I in can your get box. It in my get it out of your box. If she get it now, I can get it. I mean, get okay. it, get it then. Okay. All right, Miss Clark. She got something else to add. No, she she didn't she say. She got something else to add. She responded to a set of what? See, Madam Mayor, so this is what happened. This is what happened. Yeah. You, when we get attacked, we get shut down. Yes. When we get attacked, we get shut down. And every time something comes out and the truth comes out and we start dealing with something that I'm belligerent and she got documentation. She okay. in, in the work session minutes. She made the statement that was approved that we should not discuss anything that was not before us as a body. And every time this comes up, Councilmember Hargrove pulls out oh, paper that right. says, this is what the attorney said. The, okay. Read that. Okay. Mayor, so read that. The newly read elected that. council shall meet on the second Monday okay. following its election from the purpose of organization, after which the council shall meet regularly at such time as may be prescribed by the rules, but not less frequently than once each month. Special meetings shall also be called by the clerk to the council, which we don't have. Upon the request of the mayor or the majority of members of the council, all meetings of the council shall be open to the public, except the meetings may be closed in accordance to the Maryland Open Meetings Act, Subtitle 5 of Title 10 of the State of Rule for the Council should provide the residents of the town shall have the responsible opportunity to be heard at the open regular council meeting in regard to any municipal questioning. Now, if this is the charter, where is what was done to me done in accordance with the charter? It wasn't. Just okay. like this documentation that you're asking to be Xerox, what date is on it? Oh, what date is on that council? What date you is know, we on can't, it? like I said, we can't resolve this tonight anyway. It because should it's be. Not, it's been lingering for two but years. But today, February 28th, 2020. And I've never gotten it. You should have never. Got, this letter was emailed from the attorney. No, that, to that, everyone, no. To everyone. Well, I didn't. I didn't. Not um, only that, but when counsel, when I'm trying to talk, the, the ten, attorney doesn't okay, work let, the charge. Okay, let's listen to when the letter was sent out. It doesn't matter. That when, doesn't matter. It was emailed to who? Everyone. It supersedes the attorney. Supersedes our charter is what you're telling me. No, I'm sure no, the attorney he wouldn't do anything that would um, not follow the charter or the what? state of Maryland. Really? So you guys, you I guys need a time. copy. You Can I get a copy, copy tonight? Councilmember Wade said last last uh, work session I don't that have you guys received a copy. I'm I saying what she, she didn't no, speak. I did not go back and listen I to the tape. That. No. I told her okay. 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 do this. You okay. did that and we broke the letter that she wrote. Y'all always write letters dismissing people, so you present yeah. that, and we'll present the letters that don't have a signature, that yeah. don't have a date. Right. Do that. Well, do okay. that. And then all I out. will no. okay. present my okay. issues that was never addressed. That's okay. what we'll do. Okay. That's I'll what we'll get do. a copy. Let's Let's you you can get a copy of that. Let her have the copy of that. Would you please? Let her have the copy of it. I'm ready. I'm ready to move. I have it. Excuse me for one moment, you all. We have 
two citizens I mean, that are trying to address. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to acknowledge Ms. Clark first and Mr. What is your name again? Patrick. Mr. Patrick. Okay. Okay. My question. You are after her, Mr. Patrick. My question is for Mr. Rumi and probably Ms. Morgan for Public Works. Being that we have um, four ball things, two per season, can that be broken down to every three months so you can have it all year long? Like every three months instead of having two in May and two in October? Right. And so that way citizens won't have a whole basement full of trash. They can like, get rid of it on a regular basis. Well, mm -hmm. at the time we did that because okay. of covert, and then we didn't get the two days that we were supposed to do last year. So we kind of, you know, okay. pushed them together because people were dumping bulk everywhere, not just, you know, our folks, but all over. So we decided to have it. But moving but forward, moving forward, we can no, decide. but we can't. Let, let me just address that before we get okay. the wrong concept out there. Those dates that we have are given to us from the county. Same they thing. send us a dumping ticket. Mm -hmm. They designated. You can't juggle it around the way you want. They send you two days at a time. So they do that, I guess, so they can get their yeah. schedule outlined because they pay for the dumping. Now, that, so there's no way you can really do that. Mm -hmm. So, okay. That's just the answer point blank. Yeah. Okay. All right. And Mr. Patrick. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I came into this meeting from something. But it seems as though this is such a dysfunctional meeting. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Everybody is getting their feelings, getting involved with this. What is the main reason why you all take this job? Mm -hmm. And if you all can answer that for yourself, something is wrong. Right. If it's it for the people or for your personal right. self, you're in the wrong job. You can't get personal. Even if you're being attacked, you can't be personal. Thank you. So whatever you want to do with it is wrong. <coughs> if the mayor leaves town, what is the reason for the rest of you? Is anyone going to be held accountable for what go wrong? You all got to ask yourself that question. Why? And then come and do what you're supposed to do for the betterment of the time. Ten times. That's what right. right. Okay, thank you, Mr. Pastor. <laughs> Mr. Patrick, Mr. Patrick, what's your address again? You on Je uh, Veterans Memorial? Yes. Sir. I know where you are. I know where you are. All right. I wanna, I wanna just thank everyone. Oh God. I'm, you know what? I'm gonna tell you right now. No, hold on. Just hold on. I'm, I am, and I don't know how many more people have comments they need, they need to make, but right now, I'm gonna tell you right now, it's been a long, hard day. And I am just about to wrap these things up and get ready to get out of here. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, it's, it's enough to give me high blood pressure. So if you have something, you can give me a summary on yours. Give me a summary on yours, and we're about to roll. Okay. I got to do it. And then I'll just call that, um, the next thing you're posted on the website as of Monday. Mm -hmm. The last time you're posted on the website is August of 2020. I want this up repeatedly. Okay. There should be a format or a deadline or something that minutes are posted on that website. Okay. We are in May, long of June. That is totally unacceptable. Okay. Uh, Okay. Uh, don't be uh, uh, close to me. I think Council Member Waiters mentioned earlier. Uh, I need to get all the minutes and you vote on them, and then I post them. There's been a delay since this is uh, Spain. 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 Spain
uh, in terms of getting the uh, information that we need to post. Didn't I hear you say 2020? Consistent. Last year, I was making us the same thing. The posting was a year behind. I complained about that two, three years ago. So. This is the
Second. Second. Second on that? Okay. Second. So, so who's first? Council Member Waiters, who did the second? I did. Move Waiters. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all. Thanks again for coming out, everybody. Go home and be blessed. Good day. Good day.